king of the dogs. Dog king, he's the king of the dogs. Dog king, he's the king of the dogs. Dog king, he's the king of the dogs. His mother was a dog, his father was a king, so now he's dog king, and he's king of the dogs. Dog king, his bite is worse than his bark. Dog king, because he bites like a shark. Dog king, you know he's ruling the streets. Dog king, he won't roll over for treats. His mother was a dog, his father was a king, so now he's dog king, and he's king of the dogs. Dog king! Today we find Dog King, king of the dogs, lying on his throne, gazing out at his kingdom. It had been quiet lately. Many would say it had been too quiet, but not Dog King. He liked the quiet. Good quiet meant good naps. He would stretch out on his dirty mattress throne and just take in the sun, turning occasionally so that the fleas on his belly could get an even tan. He would sleep away entire mornings like that, and Dog King's mornings sometimes lasted until well after noon. Naturally, he wasn't alone. Next to Dog King, in a well-cushioned booster seat scavenged from behind an old daycare, rested Pickles the Chihuahua. Pickles, also known as the royal assistant, was snoring softly. The shaky little dog's entire body would rattle with every... <sighs> the rest of the alley was littered with other dogs. It was also littered with, well, litter, but the dogs didn't seem to mind. Many were napping, like Dog King, but others were busy. A tattered-looking mutt chewed a bone so old it may have been his peepums. Two collies wrestled playfully, splashing through dirty puddles and nipping at each other's tails and occasionally their own. Others lounged or played, fetched or ate, but they all stopped when Dog King sat up slow. The shaggy king yawned so hard he nearly lost his precariously placed cardboard crown. <sighs> royal assistant, he said. Tell me what's on the royal schedule today. <sighs> royal assistant. <sighs> Pickles. the little chihuahua said, blinking his big, watery eyes. Tell me what's on the royal schedule today. Ah, oh, of course, of course, said Pickles, shaking himself awake. Well, let's see. It's afternoon, so we missed the 10 a.m. P tour and first, second, and third breakfasts. Dog King yawned widely again. Couldn't be helped. Any good news? Pickles dug in his booster seat and pulled out an old pocket watch. He stared at it seriously. Of course, he couldn't tell time, but the pocket watch was missing both hands anyway, so it didn't really matter. Oh, we're just in time for first lunch. Excellent. What's on the menu today? It's Monday, so the Chinese buffet will be dumping last week's food. Perfect. But... We've also gotten reports that a fridge died at Charlie's Variety Store, and they had to throw out 20 gallons of ice cream. Even better! Let's go! Dog King led the way out of the alley, a dozen or so dogs on his heels. They wove through the endless sea of human legs on the street and finally made their way to the alley that ran behind the store. Pickles lifted his little nose into the air. Oh, sweet Georgia Brown! I can smell it already! Strawberry! Vanilla and chocolate. Oh, God, it's a Neapolitan. It's a Neapolitan dogging. We have a Neapolitan. The little dog began to shake all over. Three flavors is three times as good. Wait, said Dog King, cocking his head. Pickles, everyone, hold on. Be quiet. Curious, they all fell quiet, even Pickles. Ears perked up and heads tilted. There, in a little nook between the back of two stores, a dog was crying. Dog King patted over. Hello? Are you okay in there? The crying stopped for a moment. 
no. Is that, is that you, Dog King? It sure is. And what's your name? Annie. Okay, Annie. Why don't you come out and tell me what's wrong? A great poofy chow walked out of the nook, head down and paws dragging. Her long reddish fur was brushed and shampooed and smelled like flowers, and around her neck was a bright pink bow. I was at the groomers, she said, starting to cry again. I finished getting brushed and someone, someone. <laughs> what? What did they do? Huh? Asked Pickles. <laughs> they stole my... <laughs> it's okay. You can tell us. They stole my good girl treat. The dogs all gasped. No, they wouldn't. They couldn't. They shan't. Dog King placed a comforting paw on Pickle's shoulder to keep the little dog from getting any more upset. What kind of treat exactly? My good girl treat. I get it for being a good girl at the groomers. The flavor, Annie. What about the flavor? It was my favorite. Fish and liver. Oh. <laughs> oh, a fish and liver treat stolen in our kingdom, Pickle said. This crime will not go unpunished, Dog King proclaimed, turning to the gathering crowd of dogs. I hate to say it, but Ice Cream can wait. Back to the throne for a trial. No, no Ice Cream, said Pickles. So hungry, feeling faint. Pickles? Actually, I could go for some ice cream, too. Well, then, I hate to say it, but justice can wait. It's ice cream time. The howls and cheers could be heard three blocks over. One hour, two bathroom breaks, and twenty gallons of ice cream later, Dog King and the rest arrived back at their alley. Hearing the news, a crowd of dogs had gathered. They all made way for Dog King and Annie, creating a fuzzy, panting hallway as they walked back to the throne. So, said Dog King, taking his seat, any idea who might have stolen it? Ah, uh, I bet it was other, other Rex, said Pickles. Hey, said a boxer in the crowd. Dogs made room and revealed other, other Rex scratching at one ear. I didn't steal nothing. You're the squeaker sneaker, you squeaker sneaker. Don't think we forgot. Pickles would never forget. Pickles never forgets. Ah! Annie cut in, stepping between the chihuahua and the boxer. Actually, Pickles, I know it wasn't Rex. Two other dogs were locked in the groomers with me. No way in, no way out. It had to have been one of them. Very good, said Dog King. And who were the two? I was with Broadwin the St. Bernard and Rambo the Pitbull. Guards? A trio of German shepherds came forth and saluted crisply with big shaggy paws. Bring the suspects. Two of the guards turned and marched out of the alley. The one left behind scooted after them on his butt. Guard, do you have worms? Dog King called out. No, sir, said the sergeant as he scooted around the corner. It's just itchy. Itchy butts or not, the guards did great work. Not an hour later, the pair of suspects were lined up in front of Dog King and Annie. The crowd watched on intently. Not a slouched ear in the house. Someone has eaten Annie's treat, proclaimed Dog King. Her good girl treat, which we all know tastes even sweeter. There was a murmuring as the crowd agreed. Now she isn't accusing anyone in particular, but the two of you were the only ones at the groomer with her, so it's you I have to question. Make sense? 
The two dogs nodded nervously. All right, said Dog King. I'll ask each of you one question. Just answer as best you can. He stepped off his dirty mattress throne and walked up to Broadwin, the first dog in line. Broadwin was a giant St. Bernard. She was drooling thick ropes, but still smelled fresh from her grooming earlier that day. Broadwin? Yes, Dog King? Here is my question. How many fleas can dance on the head of a St. Bernard? There were confused looks in the crowd. Broadwin tried to look at her own head by crossing her eyes and sticking out her long, slobbery tongue. Uh, three, four, six, I don't know, I can't count them. The dang things keep moving. Very good, Broadwin, said Dog King, walking to the next dog in line. Rambo stood at attention, his face serious and confused all at once. Rambo, I trust your stuffy bunny is well? I just got the perfect mix of drool and dirt on it. Thank you, Dog King. Good. And now here's your question. How much mail could a mailman mail if a mailman could mail mail? A mailman? Where? Not on my watch, buddy. This is Rambo's house. No mailmen allowed. If I get my chompers... Rambo? Oh, if they're wearing their little shorts. Oh, boy. Ow! Oh! Rambo! He stopped his growling and perked an ear. It was a hypothetical question? A hypothetical question? Where? Not on my watch, buddy. This is Rambo's house. No hypotechnicals. Rambo? He stopped again, cocking his head. There's no mailman, and you can't bite a hypothetical question. Hmm, okay said Rambo, tucking in his tail. Ah, uh, going to be completely level with you. I don't know what that word means. It means it's a question about something pretend. It's just supposed to get you thinking, understand? Not really. Well, that doesn't matter, said Dog King, talking to the crowd now. Because I know who stole the treat. The crowd gasped. Who took it? Oh, who took it? cried Pickles. Who, who, who? echoed the jumble of dogs in the alley. Of course, that many who's got the whole crowd howling, and it was another five minutes before they were quiet enough to keep listening. The thief! The crowd leaned in. Broadwin shuddered. Rambo's eyes darted back and forth. Was? Dog King said dragging it out for dramatic effect. Broadwin! The dogs all gasped. Rambo wagged his tail happily and bounded back into the crowd. What? But how could you know? You only asked me a nonsense question and I didn't even count it right. Your answer didn't give you away, said Dog King. Your breath did. He spun on Broadwin. You think I don't know the sweet good stink of fish and liver when I can smell it on your breath? The questions were a trick. I just wanted a sniff of your breath. You reeked of fish and liver while Rambo smelled like... Was it cat litter, Rambo? Cat litter, yep! Rambo called back from the crowd. Broadwin broke out in big, messy sobs. She tried to lean against a terrier and nearly crushed him in the process. I'm sorry, Annie, said Broadwin. It was my first time at the groomers and I just freaked out. All the snippies, all the buzzies, all the cutties. They're so scary and when I get scared, I get hungry. And when I get hungry, I kind of lose control. Oh, that's okay, Broadwin, said Annie. I understand. I used to get scared at the groomers, too. Really? Yeah. But once you go a couple times, you see it's not bad. Just a little shampoo and a haircut. And look at you. You're beautiful. Broadwin smiled widely, her tongue lolling out of her mouth. 
Of course, you did steal the treat, said Dog King. Do you have any treats you can replace it with? Well, said Broadwin shyly, I keep a stash of treats in my doghouse in case I get the nibbles. A doghouse treat would do nicely. Broadwin was back faster than a greyhound, and she didn't come back with just one treat. She came back with all of her treats. They dragged behind her in an old canvas grocery bag, spilling chicken nuggets and soup bones and pizza crusts onto the pavement. Since you were all so nice, even Annie, who had every reason to be mad at me, I want to share this with everyone. Ah! cried Pickles, diving into the bag. The other dogs howled with excitement and tore open the treats. There was a great feast that lasted all of five minutes, and that night they all went home with sticky snouts and peanut-buttered eyebrows. Dog King, as always, leading the way. The End Dog King, he's the king of the dogs. 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 His mother was a dog, his father was a king, so now he's Dog King, and he's king of the dogs. Dog King, his bite is worse than his bark. Dog King, because he bites like a shark. Dog King, you know he's ruling the streets. Dog King, he won't roll over for treats. His mother was a dog, his father was a king, so now he's Dog King, and he's king of the dogs. Thanks for listening. 